Okay, so uh, let's take a look at Dead Space, the remake, not the 2008 version. And I'm coming at this from the perspective of someone who's played the original 15 years ago and whose memory might not be as good as it used to be. So Dead Space is one of the most iconic space survival horror game series that I think are out there. I don't think there's many gamers who haven't heard of this one or at least one of its sequels. If you don't know about it, think Event Horizon meets The Thing meets Red Dwarf. Yeah. That sounds about right. Anyway, so how is the remake? Well, in short, it's excellent. Um, I wasn't expecting to jump into this and enjoy it so much. I also wasn't expecting to jump quite so much. Um, having played the first one, I was like, yeah, no, this won't scare me. But it looks amazing. It plays mostly amazing. And look, I always like to get the negatives out the way with first, especially when there's not many. Um, 4K with automatic detail on 3070 Ti with the 5900X completely unplayable. I'm not exaggerating the frame rates even on the intro. The game for me ground to a halt. Maintaining full screen on launch also seems problematic. I have to keep coming back into it. Now, the interface does have a little bit of lag on PC. For example, hitting escape on the keyboard takes a long key press sometimes and sometimes it just seems unresponsive. But other than that, that's it. At 1440 Ultra, it runs like an absolute dream and it looks fantastic. I've no problems playing it on that. And that's the negatives out of the way. Quite frankly, I'm amazed at how good it looks. I wasn't expecting much more than a bit of polish, but interestingly enough, it's how good I remember the original looking in my memory. See, rose-colored glasses are an amazing thing, and I know for a fact the 2008 version doesn't look anything like the 2023 version. It looks incredible now because I'm expecting it to look as good as the games now, and it absolutely does. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. It stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with modern releases. The lighting, the detail, the effects, all superb. From Isaac's suit all the way up to the pulsating walls in some of the latter parts of the game, it just looks fantastic. Having played Callisto Protocol recently, the hallmarks and connection between these two games is abundantly clear and I thought I might feel some kind of fatigue but not at all. They are their own entities and whilst they do hit similar beats here and there, the stories, combat mechanics and paths you tread are unique enough that this feels like its own experience as it should. Combat is excellent, the weapons and special mechanics all function as well as they did before. Not much change has happened here, I don't think it was needed either. There always was a tiny bit of lag in the PC port, I remember back in 2008, I remember that much, and I still feel that sometimes it could be more responsive, but I'm not sure if that's just an age or a perception thing, or it's just the way the game is supposed to play. But either way, once you get used to it, it feels absolutely fine, it's just kind of the pace of it, I think. Characters and voice acting are excellent, whilst the former might serve as you expect kind of an expendable backdrop to the main character's journey, they're solid and well realised. As for Isaac, there's just something I love about him and always have. Um, much like the scientist Gordon Freeman from Half-Life, he's an engineer in this case, you know, not a buff marine, and he's doing literally all he can to survive. Although from a story point of view, he does seem to slip into it with instant ease, unlike comparatively Jacob and Callisto Protocol, who also, you know, went thrust into this kind of survival situation. I feel he builds up to it more than Isaac, who is tooled up and armoured in minutes and seem instantly capable of shrugging off necros with relative ease. Atmosphere is spot on, environments are gorgeous, and there were even sections that were so uh, spacious and stunning that it felt completely new, and it actually left me wondering if they were new or if I'm just starting to forget things at this midpoint in my life. Thanks game. I'm going to assume they added whole new sections, and I'm not going to research if I'm right or wrong on that, as I'm concerned about what I'm going to learn. Specifically, the areas that feel new are where you can fly around. They feel new and expansive to me. Um, and also feels like they're making you go back. Like, I don't remember there being any locked doors where there were security clearances you could get through. So either I'm losing it or this is completely newly added, which is fantastic. Because it gives you reason to revisit other areas. It gives you collectible stuff. They have additional rigs, so they kind of provide uh, subquests. So yeah, it does feel like they've added a lot more to it. And honestly, it's made it a really fresh experience. And I think that's really well done in my opinion of course difficulty is well balanced uh, ranging from story easy medium to hard um, I'm fine fluctuating between easy and medium depending on where we are in the game that's kind of my comfort zone from a story point of view I'm finding myself absorbing it much more this time I probably glossed over my playthrough when I was back in my late 20s but now I'm loving the detail it adds it's good info to know and the writing on the walls literally ties into the game as well and gives you hints at times you know the story is great and it's just that kind of horror and unknown that space holds and and what happens when we discover things completely alien to us it has that event horizon feel to it you know
Sound is awesome, atmospheric and terrifying as you can imagine. It gives you all the clues and hints you need, from a necro tapping you on the back of your neck to one scuttering through the vents over your head, or even the dying whispers of a crew member of the Ishimura on the other side of a door. Yeah, the whole thing is quite unsettling at times, it's brilliant. So, the big question is, is it worth the price tag? There's so many games out these days, and with such a reduced amount of time, it's hard to justify replaying and repaying for a game that you might have played many times before. So I guess that leads me to the recommendation. Is this an instant purchase? I can't unequivocally say yes or no for this one. If you've played the first one too, you know, and you enjoyed it, and you haven't touched it in a decade and a half, like me, and you have the time and money and nothing else to play, then yes, 100% buy it right now, play it, enjoy it, you're not gonna regret it. Um, I thought I'd feel bored pretty fast, and I was like, yeah, yeah, this isn't gonna frighten me at all, it's just a polished remaster. But this feels, whether due to my perception or it actually being so, like a whole lot more. If you're new to the series, then hell yeah, this is a purchase. If you like this genre, or the movies I've referenced, this kind of thing, you're gonna love it. This is the definitive way to experience Isaac's story. If you haven't played this game before, then this is definitely a recommendation, 100%. Even if you've just played Callisto, I'd still recommend that you get this one. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. So if you've played it, it depends on whether you want to experience it again, as you remember it, but better. Um, there you go. And for those of you that are curious, I'm going to try and do some gameplay footage for this one as well. Okay, that's it for now. Um, what did you think of the game? Have you played it? Let me know down below. This is how I think remakes should be done. Okay, take care, folks. See you in my next video. Bye. The heartbeat is not uh, helping. Oh, I'd like a ticket, please, to get the fuck out of here.